Hey guys, Scott Mears here. Welcome back to the channel. This is another industry leader interview. Um, so this is it, Richard Mears here. He's been running successful businesses for 20 years. So we're just going to pick his brain a little bit, kind of understand a bit more so we can get a bit of advice for our startups. So I'm just going to dive into just some sort of general questions I ask most people so I just sort of see um, your perspective on it. So a sort of basic question first is, what's the cast iron tip you would give to all startups? Uh, only choose a business that you're absolutely passionate about mm. because um, uh, starting up a business and making it successful is uh, a lot of hours and a lot of work mm. and if you're not truly passionate about it mm. you will fall yeah no for sure there's definitely going to be those days where things may that might not necessarily be going right you've got to be able to just grip through it and that passion is really going to take you so I think that's what you mentioned that now going back to your younger self, similar to that, but more, this is going to be more personal. So what would sort of three, I always like asking this to everyone, is what is the three tips you'd give to, me, <coughs> to your younger self? Um, that's a good question. I need to think about it. Um, Where to start? Uh, number one, believe in yourself. You have mm -hmm. to believe in yourself because everyone will tell you that you can't do it. Mm -hmm. It's a stupid idea. Or um, give you a hundred reasons why they can't do something. You've got to truly believe you can do it and believe in yourself. Um, always do something that you're passionate about, which leads you back to your yeah. other question. And lastly, um, I have a couple of sayings, which is um, ready, shoot, aim. Mm -hmm. You can spend years and years and years talking about it, strategizing mm -hmm. about it. If you're going to do it, do it. Mm -hmm. If you're not going to do it, shut up. I like that. It's straight. It's, it's just straight to it. It's so true. You see uh, so many startups that will just talk and have loads of ideas and that's what they do for so long. Whether it's the fear or whether it's, I don't know. But yeah, I think it's just deal, just go on there. And again, you go back to the whole And um, ready, shoot, in. You know, mm. The quicker you make your mistakes, the quicker you learn. Just learn from mm. every mistake. Mm. Try not to make the same mistake twice. Mm. The quicker you make your mistakes, the quicker you're going to get better. Mm. Absolutely. So failure is good, guys. Don't be scared of that. It's a great thing. Okay, now moving on, because obviously you've been in business for 20 years, so I want to get into, this is sort of more when you get into mature business. How do you not get complacent in business when you've been, you've been killing it, been really good in business? It must be difficult not getting complacent. Just be honest. Well, I think it's easy to get complacent if you have, um, if you set your goals and once you achieve them, uh, you can just say, I've done it, I've succeeded. Mm -hmm. Whereas for me and for most other people, I never achieve a goal. So, um, for instance, we've just landed uh, Space NK with one of our brands, but that's done. You know, that was yesterday. What's tomorrow? How are we getting on in America? Why aren't we in Brazil? Um, how's the business doing in Japan? Um, the business in Japan is doing well. How can we make it better? There's always another goal. So before I've achieved one goal, I've always got another goal and another goal and another goal. You never achieve a goal. You have to stay hungry, um, and you have to know why you're doing it. What's your end game? Um, you know, my end game is always selling the business. So once I've sold the business, that's that one done. But then I would have another goal to create another business. Mm. Never yeah. achieve a goal. So it's never. It's, it's an interesting outlook, that I, and I like it. And I think, sorry, you should what? take pictures along the way, mental pictures, because in oh, your dark times. Remember the good things that you've done, and it's good that you know getting into Space NK was a hell of an achievement, mm -hmm. and um, I'll always remember that. So when I have a hard day, I think about an achievement or something, and then that spurs me on. Interesting. Again. Yeah, I think that's going to help in respect to that as well. And absolutely, no, that's an interesting way of it. I think absolutely. Um, I think that's a really good to just not be complacent and keep pushing forward, and. Would, do you not celebrate, sort of, people say celebrate the small things? Is, is there ever sort of, do you feel like you should stand back at some point and sort of, sort of relax and sort of have, not look, but sort of enjoy yourself a little bit? No. No, <laughs> fair enough. Um, you know, you enjoy the moment. Mm. Um, but it's a bit like football, you're as good as your last game. Mm. Um, and yesterday was yesterday, what's mm. tomorrow, what's today, what am I going to do this afternoon? Um, you know, you, you should um, uh, 
reward yourself for good performance, you should feel good about it, you should have that moment of success, um, but you know, you've got another game next Saturday and you've got to win it again. I think that's a really good point with, um, I think a lot of people can have, not for very interesting views of what entrepreneurship can go into with the cars, the money, and if you have these set goals, once you hit them, then what happens? Do you just stop business? Are you happy? Are you even satisfied? So I think it's good to have a good strategy to, and obviously a passion for it, that you see it as long, uh, long term. Otherwise, when you achieve those material things, is are you actually satisfied and you just stop working? I think it's a bit of a, an interesting thing about entrepreneurship at the moment. It's, it seems as a very sexy thing, if you will. Yeah, I, I can never see me stop it. You never see yourself? No. Would you want to stop? No. You yeah. want to stop? That's interesting. <laughs> they may come a time, mm. um, but right now, no. Um, I have too many children to support. <laughs> Fair enough. So, obviously, for SAPS, funding is a new step. I think whenever I find people aren't doing a point out, funding is usually one of the main reasons people say. So, how do you get around that sort of the risk of understanding um, how to get the funding and sort of maybe putting your savings into it? What, where's that risk to reward? How do you know where to just go all in? It's something you've got to be passionate about, it's something you've got to believe in. So, um, for myself, when I launch a product, I always, I never launch a product that I don't think can be cash positive in three months. Um, and sometimes you've got to put your life on the line, you've got to put your house on the line, you've got to put all your savings on the line. Um, wherever possible, do it with your own money, because then you're the 100% of your business. Uh, but there is a, an, another view that says uh, OPM, work with other people's money. Um, and sometimes that works very well, um, and sometimes it doesn't work so well. If you're going to use other people's money, you have to have a very good relationship with that person. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Especially, well, the, the bigger the company goes, it definitely gets a bit more interesting. Um, and going a bit more deeper into risk, because obviously uh, a part of risk is a lot of people maybe be saying, no, you can't do it, or you can't do it. Everyone tells you. Yeah, and that's sort of what builds up the risk in your mind. How would you balance that sort of, when everyone's saying no, but you're still quite confident. Because obviously you want to take information from people, evidence that are very big on building your own stuff, get knowledge from people. If you're just so believe that this one thing's going to uh, work, how do you balance out being silly? Uh, well, you just got to do it. Mm. And you've got to believe in it. And you've got to be willing to take the risk. Mm. Most people tell you you can't do it because they wouldn't do it. Mm. Um, they never will do it. Everyone has opportunities in life. It's whether you're willing to take the risk. Yes. Uh, to take on that opportunity. Everyone has it, it's available to everyone, uh, but not everyone is willing to take a risk. Um, otherwise, everyone would be doing it, but uh, there's no balance. You will have sleepless nights, you will have times when you can't afford to pay a bill, mm. there are times you take risks that maybe you shouldn't do, mm. um, but you know, you've got to work hard and uh, make that business a success. Johnny Wilkinson, one of my favourite um, quotes is from Johnny Wilkinson. Um, somebody said that um, uh, he was lucky, and his answer was, the harder I train, the luckier I get. So everyone has luck, um, and I believe in luck. Uh, but at the same time, I believe you make your own luck. Mm. And the harder you work, the more you put yourself about, mm. the more you put into your business, the more opportunities you, you'll find. Mm and you will find the luckier you get. Mm. Yeah, that's just a funny quote that as well. I mean, it does make fun, it is just go to that um, very old say, just practice makes perfect. It's just... You're never perfect. You yeah, can well, always yeah. improve. Yeah. The minute you think you've done it, you're on the road to the mm. And that comes back to complacency, absolutely. You're never finished after that. Johnny Wilkinson stayed training, he probably still trains. Mm. He didn't stop training. You have to keep uh, improving the skills. And I think that that's a real issue that resonates with sort of with me as well, and with what I, a lot of stuff I find is this whole thing of perfection. I feel like when you sign up, you, you feel like everything needs to be perfect. When you feel like you need to do everything, too, everything needs to be perfect. But I'm starting to understand that that's just 
rubbish. It just it's never rubbish. perfect. Yeah. Um, so we do beauty products um, and you know, what's called the copy on the box. Um, I can do the formula, I can do all the compliance. When it comes to the copy on the box and the design, it just changes, 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 and all of a sudden a two-month project and a six-month mm. project. Sooner or later, you have to say go. And tomorrow you'll think, I should have changed that. Well, just change that on the next run. And then say, how can I improve it and change that on the next run? Mm. Just do it. <laughs> just do it. Okay. If you don't do it, you're never going to go in. Yeah. Because yeah. you can plan and plan and plan but until you actually act in it. Maybe get on the feedback. And that's you'll never where, know. You'll never know. It's just, it's, um, it's just guesswork. Well, just well, say educated. Yes, yeah, yeah, but you're yes. assuming in a sense like that, oh, I assume that this is going to be correct. You can always make it better. Mm. Yeah, that, I, I think that's really true that people need to. I think that's a really strong um, point that we've made on is that you can always make it better, so just stop trying to perfect it so much and just, just get it done. Um, okay. um, and just another one I want to touch on in regard to productivity. So I've, I've read a really interesting quote that really threw me back and it said, um, don't mistake busyness for productivity. Um, and that kind of threw me back a bit because I, I think I find a lot of people that start to say they're very busy, they're doing all sorts, they're speaking to everyone, but you do, you'll meet them through almost like not much has changed. But they've been working 10 hours a day. And so I think it's a very true and a scary thing to think about because sometimes we're just so unaware of the whole procrastination how do you get around that? I don't think anyone gets around it. I think you um, it's a matter of experience. So um, being sometimes, well, there's a few things. Number one, you always do the things you like doing mm. and you tend not to do the things that you don't like doing. Yeah. Well, you have to set out what your main objectives are and there's nothing like a list of objectives and what have I done about that objective today? Mm. I myself waste time. I find myself doing things that actually I shouldn't be doing. I'm a bit reactionary rather than proactive. Mm. And in times like that, you have to take yourself off, mm. go out for a break, go out for a walk, yeah. and have a good chat to yourself. Mm. And you, you know, I have conversations in my head where I, I give myself a damn good talking <laughs> to because um, you know I, I have been working on spreadsheets when I should have been working on compliance for Brazil. But mm. Because I don't like compliance, I tend to put it off and off. Mm. And then, actually, when I do it, I find it very easy. It's mm. done quite quickly, and it's off, and business will grow as a result. Mm. Um, but you have to have time every day where you're looking at tomorrow's business yeah. and tomorrow's cash flow. Um, okay, we've got a record year this year. What are we going to do next year? How are we going to make that better? How are we going to improve cash flow? How are we going to improve logistics? And you just got to keep going. Okay. Yeah. No, I think that's really good. Obviously, planning, especially being a day ahead of like a year ahead. And another interesting one that I'm doing currently, it's quite great, is I'm now and I'm logging my time. So that might be a good one as well. I'm currently logging my time, what I'm doing. And I feel if I do that for a week, I think it's going to really shock me where I might put some of my time over. Most of it's on making a coffee or whatever it's on something that I shouldn't be, uh, be focusing on. So I think that's going to really minus a lot. Just don't spend too much time writing down what you've been doing. Otherwise, yes. you will be inefficiently busy. <laughs> You'll be inefficiently busy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, thank you very much for that. That was amazing just to pick your brains on these 20 years in successful business. I mean, that's amazing just that amount of experience and knowledge and ability to have, especially the staffs. Um, that's why the community are very engaged with the start and so they just need guidance and mentorship and sort of support and so Well, that's another thing, you know, if you can get a mentor, it's mm. a great help. They can mm. put you forward a couple of years. Mm. If you know someone that's made mistakes, mm. and anyone in business has made mistakes, they can help save time, money, effort, mm. um, guiding you and assisting you um, in, into what you should be doing, what you shouldn't be doing. And sometimes it's a very lonely place. Mm. When you're running your own business, everything's on you, every decision is on you, every risk is on you. Having someone to talk to that actually understands what you're going through is a, a very powerful tool. Um, so any startup, I would urge you to find someone. And there's yeah. lots of people in business that will help you. Yeah. Um, I do the same with, with young startups. Um, I don't mind offering advice. Can I spend five days a week with them? No. But you know, an hour on a phone a week, 
you know, I find that very rewarding. Mm. Well, that, I, I think that's what you just mentioned there, is that you, you'd be surprised at how many people would be going to it because of the rewarding aspect. Um, they're not necessarily looking to get much more up, and it's very rewarding for, and to be asked as well. Um, it's a very nice thing. Um, so I think you'd be surprised at how many um, people in business would actually be going to it. Just ask. If you don't ask, you exactly. don't Exactly. It goes up. Don't ask. Yeah, exactly. Don't ask. Don't ask. That, that's as simple as it is. So. Absolutely. Thank you very right. much. Thank you very much, Scott. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, we've got some great knowledge and experience from that as well. As always, please follow me on all social media. Um, Twitter is at Scott Mears underscore. YouTube, which you're now is at Scott Mears. And Facebook is at Scott Mears Entrepreneur. Until then, guys, I'll see you then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.